Do you think you already know the crop tool in Lightroom? Well, think again. There are many hidden functions in that tool. My name is Wolf Amri, Wolf Amri on Instagram. Welcome to part six of my Lightroom tutorial series. You will find the crop tool right under the histogram on the top right. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut R on your keyboard. Let's start this lesson with something that you might not expect in the crop tool. Let's say we shoot an image with a tilted horizon, which by the way is one of the most frequent compositional mistakes in photography and should be corrected for every image, no matter if you crop it or not. Of course I'm a little more thorough than that, so I faked the images to get a tilted horizon. I swear. Lightroom has a cool tool for that, the angle tool, and it is located within the crop tool. It even has an auto function, but auto does sometimes create weird results. So we're going to rather use the manual tool. Click on the bubble level icon and then find a line, in this case the water level. Click and drag along the line and once you release, Lightroom will automatically rotate the image to level the horizon. Much quicker than always having to click on the water level symbol is just hitting the command or control key on your keyboard. Does the same much more convenient. You can also do the same with vertical lines. Lightroom will automatically detect whether you're drawing vertically or horizontally. Of course, you can also use the slider here to change the angle. That will show a finer grid that will help you better level your crop. And finally, you can also grab one of the corners of the image. And as soon as the mouse pointer appears with a rotate symbol rather than a resize symbol, you can start dragging it and rotate the image. So much for making sure our image is level. Now onto what you'd expect from the crop tool, the cropping function. When you click on the crop tool, you will be able to drag the corner points to change the cropping. You will, be, you will probably realize that the aspect ratio will stay the same as your original image, no matter what point you're dragging. How can you change that? First of all, you can unlock that aspect ratio and freely choose your crop clicking that button or use the keyboard shortcut A. Like here, for example, we can create a panorama. I do, however, recommend to stick to the more common aspect ratios like 2 to 3, which is the ratio for DSLRs or most mirrorless, or 4 to 3 for most compact cameras, or 16 to 9 for TV. They all can be found by clicking on this drop-down. Why do you want to do that? Because if you want to print, you often cannot choose any size you like, but have to get one of the readily available formats. Also, when exporting for your tablets, smartphones or TVs, they have a certain aspect ratio and you want to fill the complete screen rather than letterbox the images. iPhones, for example, have an aspect ratio of 19.5 to 9, which is a little weird. But if you want to export images for viewing on an iPhone, you can enter that crop aspect ratio here, choosing Enter Custom. You can enter up to five custom crop expert ratios here, but unfortunately, you can neither rename them nor delete them. If you add a sixth, it will just delete the first one. Another cool tip about ratios, if you alt click the ratio in this list, Lightroom will automatically expand the crop to the image bounds to give you the biggest possible image size for that ratio. Now, what if my original image is shot in landscape orientation and I want to crop it in portrait orientation? For example, I shoot a portrait in landscape orientation, which I often do because I like to crop portraits in a 4 to 5 aspect ratio. And that works better when shooting landscape orientation. Otherwise, I'd have to bring it into Photoshop and add some space on the sides. That is easy with a perfectly white background, but not so easy with everything else. Either way, useless work, so shoot in landscape orientation. Okay, so I choose 4x5 in the drop-down. You would expect that you can rotate the frame, but nope. You can't do that. It will only rotate 45 degrees. So let's reset that with command Control z There are two ways of changing the orientation. One is pressing the X key while you're in crop mode. Remember, when you're not in crop mode, 
Let's exit crop mode for a moment. The X key will flag your image as rejected. But if you have activated the crop tool, let's do that again, hitting the R key. X will change orientation. Another way to change between portrait and landscape orientation is to click this button and create a completely new crop. Depending on how you drag your mouse, you will get a landscape orientation or a portrait orientation. This method is much more cumbersome though. Many people crop to get a better composition. While I do recommend to get it in camera in order to not lose resolution, sometimes it just happens that the composition is off. In this case, Lightroom has a nice built-in line of overlays that help you compose your crop. You can cycle through them by pressing the O key on your keyboard. You will get a grid, thirds, diagonal, center, triangle, golden ratio, golden spiral, and aspect ratio. If that is too much for your taste, you can choose which overlays you really need or want to cycle through by choosing Tools, Crop Guide Overlay, Choose Overlays to Cycle. Then uncheck the ones you don't use. With Shift plus O, you can mirror the overlays. Down here, you could choose whether you want to show the overlays all the time, never, or auto so that they will only appear when you drag one of the corners. You can confirm a crop with either your Enter key, your R key. Remember, with the R key, you can also select this tool. Clicking on the crop tool again, click Done or click Close up here. Why so many options? Don't ask me. While we're here at the Close button, next to it, you will find the Reset button that will reset the crop to its original. Right above the Reset button, you see a checkbox Constraint to Image. Click it and you will see it usually does nothing at all. But if you do some lens corrections down here and drag the distortion slide into the plus region, some white areas will appear around the edge of the frame. If I now check the box Constraint to Image, it will automatically crop the white parts. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing. See you in the next lesson.